welcome to another Anatomy and Physiology Smart Art video where we guide you through an important piece of art. After watching this video, you should be able to summarize how gases diffuse into and out of blood. In external respiration, oxygen diffuses from an alveolus into a pulmonary capillary, and carbon dioxide diffuses from the pulmonary capillary into the alveolus. This occurs within the pulmonary circuit. Internal respiration involves the opposite movement of gases between the systemic capillaries and surrounding interstitial fluid, occurring within the systemic circuit. Henry's law governs both external and internal respiration, and as you may recall, states that the amount of gas in solution is proportional to the partial pressure of that gas. So, when thinking about this, consider each gas independently, meaning oxygen and carbon dioxide can simultaneously move in different directions, depending on their individual partial pressures. Let's take a closer look at external respiration and examine the partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide in a single alveolus and pulmonary capillary. In the alveolus, the partial pressure of oxygen, represented as PO2, is 100, and in the pulmonary capillary, PO2 is 40. Since the partial pressure of oxygen is higher in the alveolus, it moves from the alveolus into the pulmonary capillary. The opposite is true for carbon dioxide, so we will see it move out of the pulmonary capillary and into the alveolus, because PCO2 in the pulmonary capillary is greater at 45, while the PCO2 in the alveolus is lesser at 40. These gases travel in opposite directions and continue to the point of equilibrium. Notice the partial pressures of both gases in the blood returning to the heart equals that inside the alveolus. PO2 is 100 and PCO2 is 40. The change in color from blue to red represents deoxygenated blood entering the lungs, changing to richly oxygenated blood exiting the lungs and returning to the heart. Now let's look at internal respiration. Internal respiration is the same process in reverse, with the exchange of gases now between the blood in systemic capillaries and the interstitial fluid in our peripheral tissues. Here we can see that in a systemic capillary, PO2 is 95 and PCO2 is 40, while within the interstitial fluid, PO2 is 40 and PCO2 is 45. As a result, oxygen moves from the capillary into the interstitial fluid that bathes tissues and carbon dioxide moves out of the interstitial fluid into the systemic capillary. Note the slight drop in the partial pressure of oxygen from 100 millimeters of mercury to 95 which is a result of the blood in the pulmonary veins mixing with the venous blood returning from other respiratory organs. Again, there is a change in color, this time from red to blue, indicating oxygenated blood entering and deoxygenated blood exiting the systemic circuit. In summary, external respiration is the movement of gases in the pulmonary circuit, and internal respiration is the movement of gases in the systemic circuit. Oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse into and out of blood independent of each other and as a result of their differing partial pressures. So what? Why is it important to understand how gases diffuse into and out of blood? Well, this knowledge is crucial to understanding the changes that occur in the human body at high altitude. As climbers approach the summit of Mount Everest, for example, at over 29,000 feet, their performance suffers dramatically. While the percentage of oxygen in the ambient air remains the same, the overall atmospheric pressure drops by one-third. This low pressure is not sufficient to adequately saturate the red blood cells of the pulmonary capillaries with oxygen. At sea level, red blood cells in the systemic circuit are 97% saturated, but for climbers atop Mount Everest, systemic arterial PO2 drops to about 25. Looking at an oxygen hemoglobin saturation curve, a PO2 of 25 would result in about 45% red blood cell saturation. That is less than half of what it is at sea level. It is no wonder high altitude mountaineers often require supplemental oxygen. But you don't have to climb Mount Everest to experience this. Even at lower altitudes, the decreasing atmospheric pressure and resulting lower PO2 can affect human performance. When in the mountains, perhaps you felt winded or lightheaded when doing simple tasks like climbing stairs. And athletes who live and train at sea level are at a distinct disadvantage when competing in cities like Denver, Colorado, or Mexico City, Mexico, where their stadiums are over 5,000 feet and 7,000 feet respectively.